Before I begin this tutorial, I just want to make a quick announcement or a reminder that my new Skillshare class is now up. In the class, I'll be painting three different muffin flavors and I'll take you through how I look for references to simplifying the shapes and turn them into a sketch that you can paint realistically from imagination. Like usual, I'll be going through the painting step by step with audio instructions. This class is over two hours long and it's something that you can divide up into three separate days so you can do one muffin flavor per day. If you've never been a member yet, you can go to the link in my description box for a free trial where you can get access to so many classes Skillshare has to offer, including my many long and detailed food illustrations and watercolor basics. So that's it for the announcement, let's get back to the video. Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to show you how to paint this loose rooster. This was quite a quick painting, it only took me around 30 minutes total. But before we start, let me just show you the reference photos that I used. This is the first photo. I'm referencing the colors from this rooster. I love how clear the sections are for each color, which made it much easier for me to pick out the color palette that I'm going to use. As for the second picture, I love that it's not a static pose. There's a bit of movement and I feel like I'll be able to enhance this with a bit more dynamic from the loose painting style. You can paint this freehand, which is what I did when I was practicing to paint this on a separate sketchbook, but like this here, you can also draw out a rough sketch of the rooster before painting in order to get a more accurate proportion. So the aim of this sketch is to get the right size of the rooster which will fit well for the space that I have or the space that you have for your sketchbook. And I also want to make sure that the head, body, and the legs are in proportion with each other. I want everything to be kept simple for the sketch and I really want to avoid drawing out details because that's something that we don't want to get too caught up with for the painting itself. I'm not going to worry about the feathers, the comb on the head and the sickle feathers for the tail. I just want to make sure that I know where they're going to be positioned. If you want, you can also draw the sections very lightly as guidelines to remind yourself but keep this very light and loose so it doesn't obstruct the final painting. I feel like the sketch has enough information for me to work with, so I'm going to just show you the colors before we paint. For this, I'll be using my Codman set. This is Chinese White, Cadmium Red Deep Hue, Cadmium Yellow Hue, Turquoise, Sap Green, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, and Paints Grey. I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martins. Okay, so let's begin. I'm starting by wetting my colors to activate them. I do have to apologize beforehand though, but I didn't realize if I wasn't filming or I must have lost the footage where I was painting the base color for the comb on the head and the wattle. I used cadmium red for this and I just looked at the reference picture to get a rough shape. But it doesn't really have to be accurate, you can also make your own shapes. So here, instead of picking up the cadmium red, I waited for the cadmium red to dry before I paint the head to keep the shape separate. I started by using a mixture of burnt sienna with a little bit of yellow ochre and I used quite a thick consistency to paint the top section of the head. Then I followed this up using yellow ochre by itself, still in a thick consistency but I also use quite a lot of water on my brush so it's quite a heavy load. which makes the paper quite wet and so it takes a bit longer to dry which is the main point here. Then I follow this up with cadmium yellow and I'm just going to work on the still wet surface so the color slowly creates a gradation. And before the paint completely dries, I pick up a little bit of burnt umber and I just dot them around the top section of the head and because the surface is still wet, it's going to create a soft transition. 
While I wait for the hackle to dry, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of cadmium red to fix the shape of the wattle. And I'm also going to mix up a color for the beak from a mixture of yellow ochre and Chinese white as the base color. And while I leave that to dry, I'm going to add a bit more cadmium orange around the comb of the head and around the eyes for extra details. Next, I'm going to paint the hackle on the other side of the rooster. This time, I just went straight with yellow ochre to begin with. Then I'm going to take some burnt umber and just add the pigment on the top portion while the surface is still damp. Next, I want to work on the breast of the rooster and for this, I started out with paints grey in a thick consistency. And for this part of the rooster, I want to follow the other reference photo because it has a bit more color on this area. So for that, I'm going to create the bluish green color by mixing turquoise with a little bit of sap green. And I'm going to paint it on in a very thick consistency while adding a bit more water if I feel like the color is a bit too dark. This will also lighten the color and create an uneven surface to make it a bit more textured, which is what I'm looking for in a loose style painting. I want to be a bit more careful when I'm painting around the hackle so I don't accidentally cut the pointy ends and because that would also make the proportion a bit weird if the hackle end up being too short. So for this area I did take my time but at the same time I try to not be a bit too over detailed so it doesn't lose the dynamic of this painting and have a few messy brush strokes here and there. While the surface is still wet, I followed this up with paints grey again. You can take the green a bit further, but I also want to add on a bit of texture from the paints grey by adding a bit of water in random areas just like we did with the turquoise color so it doesn't look too flat. I tried adding a bit more water especially around the left side and also follow it up with a dry brush texture because in the reference image it looks like that part is lighter than the rest so I wanted to depict that loosely. I made the leg or the thigh a bit darker here because that's what it looked like from the reference image but I followed it up with a little bit of burnt sienna also to make it less flat. Once I'm done with that area, I moved on to the wings. I intentionally made it separate because I want to leave out a little bit of white negative space to separate those two areas so it doesn't blend into just one giant silhouette. For the wings, I did wish that I had a bit more turquoise there to make it a bit more colorful. So you can keep this in mind as you are painting yours, but it was a bit too late to add on the color now. So I just continued on with the feathers at the tip of the wings by using cadmium yellow for the top portion, followed up by yellow ochre. And for the very tip, I used a thick consistency of burnt sienna. As you can see, I work section by section because I don't want to accidentally cover up an area that's supposed to be lighter in color with the paints gray. So here, as you can see, I kind of wish that I pulled the paints gray lower, but I'm just trying to work with what I have here. So for the saddle here, I use burnt sienna as the base color and I just flick my brush in order to create that texture. It's a similar way as how I painted the hackle but I did put a bit more brush pressure and while the surface is still wet I used burnt umber just to make sure that there's a nice variation in color and value. The next thing I worked on are the sickle feathers for the tail. I first used the turquoise color from a mix of turquoise with a little bit of sap green, the same as the mixture for the body. And I paint this on by using a full pressure of my brush as I slowly curve and flick until I reach the tip of my brush to create that pointy end. For this part, I did look at both reference pictures to see how long or how certain curves are placed for the sickle feathers. It doesn't have to look exactly the same, I just want to make sure that I have more or less the shapes and the overall silhouette of the tail. And I also like to jump from place to place, so here I'm working on the saddle again using paints grey and then I followed it up with 
with burnt umber to separate the areas of the hackle and the saddle. And then I moved back to the tail again and worked little by little in each section in order to get a balanced proportion. So now that I have most of the body, I tried to clean out certain edges like the saddle here, I made the pointy edges. And as for the wing on the left, I used a very thick consistency paints gray and I tried to paint it with one clean stroke and an additional thin stroke so it doesn't look too bulky. Here I'm going back to the hackle again and I'm working on the second layer by adding textures using burnt sienna and burnt umber with a medium consistency and I'm also going to mix up a little bit of paints grey with Chinese white and I just use this colour to separate the beak. Next, I used a mixture of yellow ochre with Chinese white to create this creamy color and I just tried to follow the really rough shape from the reference photo. It doesn't have to be too accurate but I still want to keep it nice and loose. For the detail of the feet, I swapped my liner brush and used a light consistency to a medium consistency paints grey to line one side. And as for the texture along the top part, I used the same color with a dry brush load and I flattened my brush in order to create those uneven line texture. I lined the back feet as well, then I used a mix of paints grey with Chinese white and repaint the base color for the top section of the back feet. And I felt that this just adds a little bit more depth to how the feet are positioned as it's slightly darker in value. I also added a little bit of burnt sienna just to give it a slight change in color. Here I used the mix of paints grey with cadmium red to create a dark red mixture and I used this to add textures and shadows to the comb on the head as well as wattles for extra detail. Under the eye, I just added cadmium red by itself so it doesn't look too dark and I want to wait for the paint to settle a bit before adding the cream mix of yellow ochre with Chinese white to paint the base color of the eye. Then for the detail of the eye, I use paints grey using the tip of my brush. Now that all the features of the rooster have been painted, I want to just add loose textures in order to make the painting look a bit more dynamic and I like to use the colors that I've already used before or the color mixes that I've already used and do this with a dry brush consistency to either layer on some paint or line the sides so the edges of some shapes doesn't look too clean and sharp. Sometimes I also like to use a clean wet brush and pick up some paint from some of the edges and smudge it slightly and I just feel that this creates a bit more movement to the painting. I also decided to add splatters around some parts of the rooster, however I ended up loading my brush with too much water and with too much of a thick consistency of red also, so the splatter on the head was a bit too big for my liking. This was my mistake. I think I would also choose a lighter color next time, maybe like a yellow ochre or maybe to just use a thinner consistency of red so it's not so glaring. But anyway, I tried fixing it by adding water to it, thinking that I'd be able to reactivate or dilute the paint and pick up the excess pigment, but it was too late and it was already absorbed into the paper so I just gotta live with that mistake so just be mindful of that for your own painting. So after adding on the smudge and dry brush textures, I also decided to use bleed proof white to add on the white details of the rooster, like below the eye to add a bit of highlights around the cheeks and also the tail that I've forgotten to leave negative space for.
For the left side of the breast, I also decided to splatter on some of the bleed proof white and then I use a bit of water to smudge it so some parts are left as those splatters and some parts are smudged as a transparent white to lighten that area so there's more of a highlight. At the end, I also felt like the paint's grey was a bit too boring and I wanted to add a touch of colour for the cast shadow, so I thought of adding grass, but I also felt like I didn't control my brush well enough here and it'll be better if the lines were a bit finer and more subtle, but again, it's okay, mistakes are bound to happen, especially for these types of paintings, and it's just part of learning. Anyway, this is the finished painting. I actually enjoyed this more than I thought I would. I really loved being able to play with different colours in a loose way and also creating different types of textures at the same time so I hope you guys enjoy it as well like usual all the list of tools that I used here as well as my social media links will be in my description box if you're still here thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one bye